Skin markings orient the surgeon to the underlying anatomy. For mastoid surgery, there are a few key landmarks. The temporal line estimates the location of the tegmen, which forms the floor of the middle fossa. This is drawn by connecting the root of the zygoma to the inion, which is the midline occipital protuberance. The incision is planned 1-2 to cm behind the posterior sulcus and should not be carried below the mastoid tip. Divide the skin and subcutaneous tissue to the level of the mastoid periosteum and expose the temporalis fascia. Next, incise the periosteum in a T formation. Raise a subperiosteal flap by lifting the temporalis muscle superiorly to expose the temporal line, then continue dissecting anteriorly to the level of the external auditory canal. Mastoid tip, spine of Henle, temporal line, asterion, external auditory canal, McEwen's triangle, tympanomastoid suture line. Using a cutting burr, begin drilling the outline of the mastoidectomy along the temporal line. Then follow the curvature of the external auditory canal toward the mastoid tip. Connect the mastoid tip to the temporal line along the estimated course of the sigmoid sinus. The surgeon should use long, smooth strokes and sufficient irrigation. Their focus should be on the interface of the drill bit with the bone. Use the equator of the drill bit, not the tip, for efficient bone removal. This sometimes requires adjustment of one's wrist angle. This step of removing the mastoid cortex can be rapid as there are no critical structures nearby. With the mastoid cortex removed, the air cells of the mastoid bone are exposed. The mastoid air cells exhibit a variable degree of aeration. The goal is to remove these air cells and Kerner's septum to expose the mastoid antrum. To do this, the borders of the mastoidectomy cavity should be clearly defined. These borders include the mastoid tegmen, which is the bony floor of the middle fossa, the thinned, bony external auditory canal, and the sigmoid sinus. The opening at the mastoid cortex should be larger than the deeper dissection, creating a funnel-shaped or saucerized cavity. This provides a sloping edge for a good view deep into the mastoid cavity compared to an overhanging straight edge. Work your way from lateral to medial, superficial to deep, evenly across the surface of the temporal bone to avoid working in a hole. Working in a hole diminishes your view and increases the risk that you'll inadvertently injure an important adjacent structure. Follow your drill with the suction irrigator to prevent the bone from overheating and to clear bone dust for better visualization. Here, the level of the tegmen is being defined. At times, the microscope needs to be adjusted to prevent dural injury. Next, the external auditory canal is further defined and thinned from medial to lateral. Finally, the air cells at the sinodural angle are removed. Posterior wall of the external auditory canal, mastoid tegmen, position of the sigmoid sinus, Kerner's septum, mastoid antrum. Next, Kerner's septum is removed. Kerner's septum is a thickened plate at the base of the mastoid air cells, representing the junction between the mastoid and petrous portions of the temporal bone. Removal of Kerner's septum opens the mastoid antrum.
The key landmark within the mastoid antrum is the lateral semicircular canal. Also important are the keel of the tegmen, which helps identify the tegmen, and the adatus ad antrum, which is the junction of the mastoid antrum and the epitympanum. Zooming out, we have a view of the complete mastoidectomy. Here are the temporal line, the tegmen, the sigmoid sinus, the sinodural angle, the mastoid tip, the lateral mastoid tip, the digastric ridge, which helps define the facial nerve at the level of the stylomastoid foramen, the medial mastoid tip, the antrum, lateral semicircular canal, and fossa incutis. In preparation for performing a facial recess approach, the inferior portions of Kerner's septum and the digastric ridge are removed, and the external auditory canal is thinned down to the level of the facial nerve. The incus can be visualized at this stage using refracted light while irrigating into the fossa incutis. The facial recess is bordered superiorly by the incus buttress, posteriorly by the mastoid segment of the facial nerve, and anteriorly by the corda tympani nerve. To open the facial recess, start by thinning the posterior wall of the external auditory canal and following it medially and forward toward the tympanic annulus. Flatten the bone overlying the facial recess. Ideally, bone removal should progress evenly across the surfaces. Next, use a diamond burr to open the facial recess. Place the drill bit immediately inferior to the incus short process. Let it sink in toward the middle ear and then drag it to create a trough. Flatten the edges of the trough to saucerize the opening of the facial recess. The surgeon has more control when drawing the burr toward themselves rather than pushing it away, so it's preferable to drag the burr rather than push it. When drilling the facial recess, place very little pressure on the drill, letting the burr do the work. Look for the corda tympani in the bone of the external auditory canal. In the bone of the posterior margin of the facial recess, look for the facial nerve. Take note of how the pace of surgery varies throughout these procedures. The initial steps of the mastoidectomy are fast because few critical structures exist in the area. However, as we move medially and approach the facial nerve and ossicles, the surgeon should slow the rate of bone removal to maintain control and safety. Short process of the incus, incus buttress, lateral semicircular canal, developing facial recess. The facial nerve forms the posterior border of the facial recess. The corda tympani nerve forms the anterior border. Continue drilling open the facial recess by following the external auditory canal wall toward the tympanic annulus. The surgeon should always identify the facial nerve, but should not unnecessarily unroof its bony covering. The incutostapedial joint, pyramidal eminence, and stapedial tendon are now clearly visible in the developing facial recess. The facial recess is carefully widened by pulling the drill from medial to lateral between the corda tympani nerve and the facial nerve. Again, the surgeon has more control when pulling the drill toward themselves than when pushing it away.
short process of the incus. Incus buttress left intact to protect the incus from the drill. Tympanic segment of the facial nerve. Mastoid segment of the facial nerve. Corda tympani nerve. Facial recess. Incutostapedial joint. Stapedial tendon. Pyramidal eminence. Cochlear promontory. And round window niche. The optimal view of the round window niche is often parallel to the plane of the external auditory canal. This is a complete mastoidectomy with facial recess approach.